Good morning, dear children. Today we are going to see the tenth prose, the sermon at Benares. Here, the sermon means religious or moral teaching at Benares. The author name is Betty Rensha. First of all, we are going to see about the author. Betty Louise Rensha Barber was born in Shannon, Mississippi on September 3, 1927 to P.C. and Lillian Rensha. After graduating valediction from Shannon High School, she went on to obtain her Bachelor of Arts degree from Mississippi College and later a Master of Arts from Mississippi University for Women. Then let us move on to the prose, page number 133, the sermon at Benares. Gautama Buddha began life as a prince named Siddhartha Gautama in northern India. You have already known about Gautama Buddha. He was a prince in northern India. His full name is Siddhartha Gautama. At 12, he was sent away for schooling in the Hindu sacred scriptures and four years later, he returned home to marry a princess. At the age of 12, he was sent away for schooling in the Hindu sacred scriptures means holy books and four years later, he returned to home and then got married with the princess. They had a son and lived for 10 years as a befitted royalty. Then they had a son and lived a happy and luxurious life for 10 years. Befitted means proper and with royalty. The next, at about the age of 25, the prince here of heretofore shielded from the sufferings of the world while out hunting chanced upon a sick man, then an aged man, then a funeral procession and finally a monk begging for alms. Then, at the age of 25, he went out for hunting. At the time, he knew the sufferings of the world. That is, first of all, he may had a chance to see a sick man, then an aged man, then a funeral procession. Funeral procession means the procession of a dead man taken to the burial ground. And finally, a monk, that is a hermit, begging for alms. These sights so moved him that he at once went into the world to seek enlightenment. Enlightenment means a state of high spiritual knowledge. He wandered for seven years and finally sat down under a peepal tree where he vowed to say until enlightenment came. Then he went, to, went for seven years and finally sat down under a peepal tree and then he vowed to stay until enlightenment came. Enlightenment <coughs> sorry enlightened after seven days he renamed the tree as Bodhi tree and began to teach and to share his new understandings. Then he renamed the tree as Bodhi tree and he preached some moral values to the peoples. At that point he became known as Buddha that is awakened or the enlightenment. From that place, also, uh, that place he called as a Buddha, that is the awakened or the enlightenment. The Buddha preached his first sermon at the city of Benares, most holy of the dipping places on the river Ganges. That sermon has been preserved and is given here. Here, sermon means religious or moral talk. The Buddha preached his first moral talk at the city of Benares. That is the most holy of the dipping places on the river Ganges. That sermon has been preserved and is given here. It reflects the Buddha's wisdom about one inscrutable kind of suffering. Inscrutable means something which cannot be understood. That is, here the main character is Gisa Gautami. Gisa Gautami had an only son and he died. That is, the name of the person was Gisa Gautami. His only son had died. In her grief, she carried the dead child to all her neighbors, asking them for medicine. And the people said, she has lost her senses. The boy is said. In her grief, grief means great pain. 
in a great pain she carried the dead child to all her neighbors house and asking the for medicine to cure him and the people said that she has lost her sense lost her sense man she became mad the boy is dead at length kisa godmi met a man who replied to her request i cannot give the medicine for the child but i know a physician who can then one man uh, one man replied that he helped him to give a request that is he he was he know a physician who can and the girl said pray tell me sir who is it and the man replied go to sakya muni the buddha that is the other name of buddha is sakya muni go to him gisa kodemi repair to the buddha and cried lord and master give me the medicine that will cure my boy then kisa gaudami went to gaudama buddha and asked her to give the medicine for that will cure his cure her boy the buddha answered i want a handful of mustard seed he told that he want uh, he wants a handful of mustard seed and when the girl in her joy promised to procure it the buddha added the mustard seed must be taken from your house where no one has lost a child husband parent or friend then there is a condition that is no one is lost in his family poor gisa godmi now went from house to house and the people pitied her and said here is master seed take it when but when she asked did your son or daughter or father or mother die in your family they answered her alas the living are few but the dead they dead do many then poor gisa godmi went on house to house and the people pitied her and they are also give ready to give him give the mustard seeds but when she asked the second question that is did anybody last in the family then they told that alas the living are few but the dead are many do not remind us of our deepest grief and there was no house but some beloved one had died in it there is no house without any loss of dead kisa godmi became weary and hopeless and sat down at the wayside watching the lights of the city as they flickered up and were extinguished again then he felt very sad and he and hopeless and sat down on the wayside means road side watching the lights of the city are flick, flickered means lighted dimly and were extinguished again at last the darkness of the night regained everywhere then he she will see the darkness only and she considered the fate of men that their leaves flicker up and are extinguished again then she realized that the men's lives also flicker up and are extinguished again that is uh, grief means great pain the next and she thought to herself how selfish am i in my grief death is common to all yet in this valley of desolation there is a path that leads him to immortality who has surrendered all selfishness then she thought to herself that how selfish am i in my grief grief means great pain death is common to all there is death, death is inevitable yet in this valley of dissolution means an area which is filled with deep sorrow there is a path that leads him to immortality who has surrendered all selfishness the buddha said the life of mortals in this world is trouble and brief and combined with pain then buddha added that life in this world is with pain and sorrow the next for there is not any means by which those that have been born can avoid dying after reaching old age there is death of such a nature or living beings that is buddha added that everybody when he born both is means then it is also death also is there after reaching the old age there is death of such nature or living beings as ripe fruits are early in danger of falling so mortals when born are always in danger of death 
ripe means mature fruits mature fruits are early in danger of falling so mortals also when born are always in danger of death as all earthen vessels made by the potter end in being broken so it is the life of mortals earthen means earthen vessels means parts of mud also broken and they also have the death both young and adult both those who are fools and those who are wise are all fall into the power of death all are subject to death there is no variation among the humans both young and adult fools and wise are fall into the power of death of the of those who overcome by death depart from life of a father cannot save his son nor kinsmen their relations mark while relatives are looking on and lamenting deeply one by one mortals are carried off like an ox that is led to the slaughter that is no one can save anybody life that is father uh, father to his son or kinsmen their relatives the lamentations means expressions of sorrow that is so this world is affected with death and decay therefore the wise do not grieve knowing the terms of the world not from weeping nor from grieving will anyone obtain peace of mind on the contrary his pain will be the greater and his body will suffer he will make sick and pale yet the dead are not saved by his lamentation that is everybody has a pain and sorrow the all the this world is affected with death and decay the wise do not weeping and grieving will not help the dead are not saved by lamentation then he who seeks peace must be free from lamentation and complaint and grief he who speaks peace should draw out arrow of lamentation and complaint and grief he who has drawn out the arrow and has become composed will obtain peace of mind he who has overcome all sorrow will become free from sorrow and she blessed that is he who seeks peace must be free from lamentation and complaint and grief he who is overcome all sorrows will be free from sorrow he will be blessed that is an enlightened one the world is afflicted to death we are afflicted with death and decay that's all then we are going to see about the main points of the story gautama buddha was born as a prince he was named sitata gautama he was married at the age of 16 and enjoyed the royal luxuries for 10 years he had a son up to the age of 25 he was shielded from the sufferings of the world the sight of a sick man then an aged man and a funeral procession shocked him finally he saw, saw a monk begging for alms he gave up royal pleasures and set out to seek enlightenment then the next point the seventh point he wandered for sorry he wandered for 7 years and finally sat down under a big tree in meditation enlightenment came to him after 7 days he named the big tree the bodhi tree or tree of wisdom he was known as the buddha or the awakened or the enlightened one the buddha preached his first sermon at the holy city of benares on the river ganges then the next point kisa gotami's only son had died she had lost her senses and carried the dead boy to all her neighbors she asked them for medicines to cure him 
she prayed the buddha to give such a medicine that night to cure her son the buddha asked kisa gaudami to bring a handful of mustard seeds she went from house to house and had no problem in getting a handful of mustard seeds the next point the next however she did have a problem in finding a house where no one had died she considered the fate of men and realized that she was selfish in grave death is common to all surrendering all selfishness leads to immortality all earthen parts end in being broken the world is afflicted with death and decay he who has overcome all sorrows will become blessed and enlightened one then next so time to give home a read the lesson carefully and answer the short answers types questions the questions are first one how did the prince get his schooling second one what side shocked and moved the royal prince then how did gautama achieve enlightenment why was kisa gautami in deep grief what did buddha ask kisa gautami to do and why then th- that's all students then the last lesson the proposal you have to read the lesson thoroughly and understand the theme of the story now we are going to see about the main points of the cho- story as well as character sketch first point lomo and chubuko are both neighbors and landlords lomo comes to chubuko with the proposal of marriage with jubuko subuko's daughter natalia lomo is 35 and wants to lead a peaceful married life he thinks that natalia is an excellent housekeeper and not bad looking he is excited and forgets the purpose of his visit he starts quarreling with her over oxen meadows then the next point <coughs> natalia opposes lomo and claims that oxen meadows belong to them lomo is ready to show the documents to prove his ownership of oxex meadows he is ready to make oxen meadows a present to her subuko enters and adds fuel to the fire subuko sides with his daughter natalia lomo threatens to go to the court they quarrel and indulge in abusing and insulting each other then next point natalia comes to know that lomo has come there with their proposal of marriage she blames her father for not telling her about it before she threatens to die if chubuko does not bring lomo back lomo retains and now they pick up a new quarrel over their dogs natalia says that her dog squeezer is far 
superior to lomo's dog gus lomo is excited and his palpitations start rising he falls down in the armchair and loses her consciousness chibuko is confused and threatens to cut his throat or shot himself chibuko does not want to miss this opportunity he makes them embrace and kiss each other chibuko blesses them a happy married life then character sketch first one natalia natalia is talkative and short tempered she is very much concerned about her family's honor and land she is argumentative also she argues with lomo about the ownership of oxen meadows and the superiority of her dog squeezer she is very keen to get married stephen stephanovich subuko stephen stephanovich subuko is a land owner he has a helping nature towards lomo he loves his daughter and plays a role of a good father he is in search for a good match for his daughter he is good selector of words he calls lomo my angel pressure etc this shows his cunningness thank you sis